Welcome everybody to a video covering 42 of the best games to play in 21x9 or ultra wide. I've covered quite a few ultra wide games in the past, but wanted to use this video to help consolidate the best of the best to give everyone a one stop shop for ultra wide recommendations. Links to all previous videos will be in the description below, and if I mention a specific review or video for a game, the link will also be in the description. If you're looking for a specific game, make sure to use the timestamps in the description and at the bottom of the video to skip to where you need to go. For those who are curious, I'm playing all these games on an ASUS ROG Swift 34 inch ultra wide gaming monitor at 3440 by 1440 and using a very recently acquired RTX 3080. I don't think my setup is currently fully up to scratch to utilize the 3080 to its full potential, so the frame rates I say may be a little under where they should be. We'll be covering each game relatively rapid fire so that the video isn't incredibly long. So strap in and also I should mention that the games aren't in any particular order. Most games mentioned are either here for their ultra wide prowess or how great the game looks. I recommend watching reviews for any games that you're considering before buying them. And last but not least, make sure to leave a comment regarding your personal favourite games to play in ultra wide. There's obviously going to be ones I've missed in this video, so make sure to let me know. Starting off the list, we have one of my favourite games of all time, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. This is one of the best RPGs of all time, with a massive and beautiful world, amazing quests and story, and fantastic DLC to boot. The game itself and the HUD are in 21x9. Cutscenes are at 16x9 by, by default, but this can be easily fixed with a hex edit. I was running the game on max settings and using a few graphical improvement mods, and it ranged from around 60fps in some of the busier areas and cities, all the way up to 130fps, and I've reviewed this game in the past. Chernobylite is a game that's flown relatively under the radar for a majority of people. But this post-apocalyptic survival horror style game provides a smooth mix of Stalker and Metro series into its own unique and supernatural-esque version of Chernobyl. The gameplay and HUD are both in 21x9, and I experienced one or two pre-rendered cutscenes in 16x9, but everything else seems to be pretty well ultra-wide. At max settings, the game seems to sit between 60 to 90 FPS at most times, and I also reviewed this game very recently, so check that out. I'm in love with this next game, which is Resident Evil Village, and it's actually one of my first Resident Evil games I've ever played, and it's been so much fun seeing how high my heart rate can go while just playing a video game. It's scary and creepy, but nothing insane from what I've heard, and it's not as scary as previous entries but it also looks absolutely fantastic, and both cutscenes and HUD are at 21x9. I did find, however, that I had to download a fix to increase the FOV a bit, because the default felt just a little too constrained. I ran the game at max settings, with ray tracing turned on, and still maintained a surprising 70 to 100 FPS most of the time. Red Dead Redemption 2 is, in my opinion, one of the best looking and most detail-oriented games of all time. Fulfill your wildest cowboy fantasies as you ride horseback, shoot down bandits, rob stores or hijack trains and a ton more, all while looking absolutely breathtaking. And don't forget about the horse testicle physics. Unfortunately, the cutscenes are in 16x9, but as usual there are online fixes for this. Running the game at max settings, I managed to stay between 55 to 80 FPS most of the time, performing better than some games that look noticeably worse. Outer Wilds is a sleeper hit, and despite not being for everyone, this time loop space exploration game has such a unique identity, it's almost impossible not to be impressed with it and become hooked on trying to discover all of the planet's secrets before everything is destroyed and you have to start again. There's so much to discover and learn playing this game. The entire game seems to be in 21x9, including the HUD, and at max settings the game ran between 80 to 150 FPS almost always. Dying Light is up next. This first person zombie survival parkour game is one of the best zombie games in my opinion. The gameplay is some of the most enjoyable and fast paced in any game in a similar genre. This game can also be utterly terrifying if you venture out at night time there is some horrors lying around every corner. 
Dying Light 2 is also scheduled for later this year, which is probably the game I'm currently most excited for. The gameplay is in 21x9 with an adjustable FOV slider. The HUD unfortunately sits at 16x9 but isn't too intrusive and I often play with the HUD off. I was playing the game at max settings and it stayed above 100 FPS at basically all times and I've also reviewed this game in the past. Divinity Original Sin 2 is up there as one of my favourite games of all time. This tactical turn-based RPG takes place over possibly hundreds of hours with in-depth character builds, amazing characters, and addicting and difficult gameplay. The game and HUD are both in 21x9. Pre-rendered cutscenes are in 16x9, but there aren't too many throughout the game. On max settings, the game stays above 100 FPS at basically all times, and I made a video covering this game very recently as one of the best RPGs of all time, so make sure to check that out. Two games occupy the next slot, these being Far Cry 5 and Far Cry New Dawn. These games are both first person shooters based in the same open world. Far Cry 5 is based in almost modern times, whilst New Dawn is based in the same world as 5, but after the apocalypse. The game is in 21x9, while the HUD and binoculars are both in 16x9 sadly. Despite having an FOV slider, the FOV seems to reset when driving or performing actions such as climbing, which can get a little weird as it almost looks like it zooms in then back out. Cutscenes are also at 16x9. The game was at max settings and sat usually between 60 to 95 FPS, and I have a review for Far Cry 5 on the channel. The next game, Ascent, is a recently released, but in my opinion, very underrated cyberpunk based Diablo style game that absolutely nails the cyberpunk aesthetic probably more than any game I've seen before. The combat feels great and the game is just incredibly exciting to play. The cutscenes are in 21 by 9 with tiny black bars on each side. The HUD is also in 21 by 9 The game seems to have a few stutter issues which can be lessened with some fixes online but hopefully they get patched soon enough. The inventory and menus do seem to be at 16x9 as well as shops. At max settings with ray tracing on, the game sat pretty comfortably between 80 to 120 FPS when it wasn't stuttering. A controversial game is up next by the name of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Despite the controversy at release, this game has been much improved and had a lot of content added to it over the years. The look and feel of this game is possibly the most authentic large scale battle Star Wars game you can play currently. The HUD and gameplay are both in 21x9 with an adjustable FOV slider, and the game sat above 100 FPS at basically all times while running at max settings. The second controversial game is No Man's Sky. This procedurally generated space and planet exploration game has also come a long way since it's released, adding a plethora of new content and is now pretty much past what was promised when the game was announced. The game and HUD are both in 21 by 9 but there seems to be a slight bit of stretching of the HUD, but I could be wrong. At max settings, the game sat between mid 50s to 100 FPS, with occasional stutters that would happen every now and then. Battlefield 1 is next on the list and I remember this game was constantly shown off for ultra wide a few years ago when I was deciding whether to get an ultra wide monitor. I decided to show this game instead of Battlefield 5 just because it seems like it's a more popular game, but Battlefield 5 ultra wide support is pretty much the same from what I can tell. The first person shooter based in World War 1 looks absolutely fantastic and supports ultra wide during gameplay as well as the HUD. At max settings, the FPS still sat in the high 100s at basically all times with no issues. The next game, Kingdom Come Deliverance, is a first person medieval RPG with no mythical creatures or magic like most games based around this time frame. The game focuses on accurate and historical recreations, making this game different and unique from others. The gameplay is in 21x9 and the HUD only sits at the top and the bottom of the screen, not the edges, so I guess you could say it's 21x9 as well. I was running this game on a mix between high and ultra high settings and the game seemed to run between 50 to 100 FPS. When I attempted to run the game at max settings, the frames dropped considerably. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition also sits in my top games list of all time because of how intensely atmospheric and tense it is. 
The first person survival horror game takes you between a mix of close linear areas and large open world explorable locations. The gameplay is in glorious 21 by 9 and I usually play with the HUD turned down or off which makes the game feel even more immersive. I was running the game at a cross between high and ultra settings whilst also running ray tracing at high and the game seemed to sit primarily between 45 to 60 FPS as it's a very taxing game. I tried using DLSS which in my opinion just made the game look very blurry and made it look far worse and I have previously done a review of this game. The next game, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, is a unique experience that blends puzzles and combat into a pretty full-on experience for the senses, which is absolutely best played with headphones. Now I will say when recording the video for this game, I got stuck on a puzzle, so you might not get too much variety, but I'll try and show as much as I can. The gameplay is in 21 by 9 but can at times feel too close or zoomed into the character, and the game has basically no HUD. At max settings the game sat around 60 to 100 FPS most of the time. Hunt Showdown is a multiplayer focused game where your aim is to kill creatures and boss enemies and aim to escape the map. Other players will also be thrown into the mix, meaning you have to be as stealthy as possible or they'll find you, making the game super tense and exciting. Your character that you've spent a ton of time leveling up can also die permanently if you're not careful. The HUD for this game is in 16x9, as well as most of the menus, but the game itself is in 21x9. At max settings, the game sat between 80 to 120 FPS most of the time. The next game, Monster Hunter World, involves hunting and slaying or capturing large and amazingly impressive monsters, all with unique animations, behaviours and more. This game is in actual 21x9, resulting in a small black border on both the left and the right of the screen, which can be slightly distracting, but you kind of tune it out pretty quickly. The HUD is also in 21x9, but the cutscenes are unfortunately 16x9. At max settings, the game sat around 75 to 95 FPS, and I also reviewed this game quite recently. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a third-person action-adventure game in which you explore ancient civilizations and temples in the search of artifacts and information. The game is a mix of puzzles, combat, and a little bit of easy parkour. Both the gameplay and cutscenes are in 21x9, which is always awesome to see, but most of the HUD is in 16x9. At max settings, and with ray tracing turned to high, the game ran an average of 71 FPS in the benchmark test, and seemed to sit between 60 all the way up to 120 while playing. Days Gone is one of the few games ported from PlayStation and it's done so goddamn well. As you can probably tell from my love of Dying Light, I'm a big fan of zombie games, and this one provides you with a motorbike as transportation and has zombie hordes, which can be terrifying and also ridiculously exciting. The game, cutscenes and HUD are all in 21 by 9 and I don't think I've really noticed anything at all that sits at 16 by 9 At max settings, the game sat solidly between 80 and 120 FPS. It's car racing time with Forza Horizon 4. This game provides you with literally hundreds of cars to unlock, customise and race across a pretty nice looking world. Unfortunately, practically everything that isn't gameplay is in 16x9 or a weird in-between resolution, which can be a bit jarring jumping between multiple resolutions, but when actually playing, it looks absolutely awesome. At max settings, the game basically sat above 99 FPS at all times. Gears 5 is a gory and visceral third-person cover-based shooter, with some of the most beefed up allies and enemies in any game. Everything you do in this game feels incredibly powerful and impactful, and the sound of a headshot fills you with joy. The HUD and cutscenes are both in 21x9, and didn't seem to actually run into much, if not any, black bars. At max settings, the game stayed above 100 FPS almost always. The next game, Firewatch, might be a little unexpected, as I feel like it's almost been forgotten about at this point. But this short, story-driven walking simulator game provides you with a few hours of peaceful and enjoyable content. The style of this game is pretty great, and chances are you've seen at least one wallpaper inspired from this game, like the one on screen currently. The game is in 21x9, with not really any HUD to speak of, and at max settings, the game varied pretty aggressively all the way from around 55 FPS up to 150. 
Two games take this place and they are Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, the two most recent. You'll most likely know by now exactly what Call of Duty is. A first person military shooter, both of which include the Warzone Battle Royale mode, which is also downloadable for free without these games. And overall, it's a pretty fun experience. In Modern Warfare, the cutscenes ran in 21x9 with the smallest black borders on each side, and at max settings with ray tracing on, the frame sat between 55 to 100 FPS. In Cold War, there were some pre rendered cutscenes that were at 16x9, and at max settings with ray tracing maxed, the game varied between 70 to 80 FPS in some levels, all the way down to 35 in others, so it was probably worth turning the settings down a little bit. Three games occupy the next slot and these are the three most recent Assassin's Creed games. And in this video, we're focusing mainly on the most recent Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which places you in an open world in Viking times, pillaging and raiding settlements in an attempt to take over England, with the most classic Ubisoft tropes to go along with it. But it looks pretty great. The gameplay and HUD are in 21x9, but the cutscenes and dialogue are in 16x9, which can be fixed with a hex edit. At max settings, the benchmark returned an average FPS of around 63. Death Stranding is very much for a specific type of person due to the fact that even walking in this game is a challenge. Your main goal is to carry packages back and forth as a courier to deliver them across a post-apocalyptic United States. There is of course supernatural forces in play to spice it all up a little. The game is in literal 21 by 9 resulting in small black bars on each side of the screen and at max settings the game seems to maintain a pretty consistent 95 plus FPS. Doom Eternal is the ultimate fast paced demon killing metal fest providing you with some of the most gratifying combat and gameplay in any game to date. So if you're looking for something relaxing, skip it. But if you want some rage and fire, play Doom Eternal. This game is in 21x9, but the HUD sadly sits at 16x9, even though in this type of game, it actually kind of helps being able to see the HUD easily without looking away from the action. And at max settings, you'll basically stay above 100 FPS at all times. Control takes place all within a single enormous building that's ever changing, and each location feels the same, yet distinctly different. Using a combination of guns and psychic powers, you'll have quite a ball playing this game and discovering new and exciting abilities as you go. The dialogue based cutscenes are in 21x9, while pre rendered cutscenes are in 16x9, and at max settings with ray tracing on, the game usually sat between 60 to 90 FPS. Probably the most controversial game on this list currently is Cyberpunk 2077, made by the same company who made The Witcher 3. The hype behind this game left most people feeling betrayed, but you can't deny that on PC, at high settings, the game can look phenomenal. I do still think that the World of Ascent looks better though. The HUD and dialogue are in 21x9, but most of the menus and inventory type screens seem to sit at 16x9. I ran the game at max settings in an attempt to show it off when it looks good, and ran ray tracing at medium, and the game sat between 30 FPS when speeding along in a car, all the way up to 60 on some less intense areas. The next game surprised me when it came out, and I remember playing it pretty consistently around Christmas time, but Immortals Phoenix Rising is a sort of cross between Breath of the Wild and Assassin's Creed, and does both surprisingly well while also feeling like its own game and having a unique sense of humour and art style to go along with it. The HUD and gameplay are both in 21x9. I ran the game at very high settings, but not maxed, and it seemed to sit between 50 to 70 FPS. Escape from Tarkov is a very interesting one. It's one of the most hardcore first person shooters I've played, placing you in online matches with both bots and other players, with the aim of collecting loot and escaping the map. The interesting part is that your character can sustain injuries during a match that can hinder them in their next match, making you have to use a medkit or wait, and you can lose your loot and weapons if you're killed. This game is not for the faint of heart, and I'd only really suggest it if you're into some pretty intense tactical combat. At max settings, the game varied pretty heavily between 50 FPS in large outdoor areas to over 100 inside a dark factory. 
Destiny 2 is an always online games as a service looter shooter, which takes place across various different planets, killing aliens, teaming up with a number of people to take down large missions and enemies for that all too glorious loot. And I know at least one person that has put thousands of hours into this game. From what I can tell, basically the entire game is in 21 by 9 and at max settings seems to sit above 80 FPS most of the time. Ghost Runner will result in you dying over and over and over again, as every single thing imaginable will kill you in one hit. But as you learn and progress, you'll get better and better at the amazing parkour, dodging and pure art of how every level is set up. When you complete a level or a section of a level, it'll fill you with an intense amount of happiness. The HUD and gameplay are in 21 by 9 and at max settings the game sat around 65 to 90 FPS most of the time. Horizon Zero Dawn is another port from PS4 and again it's been done so incredibly well, making it one of the best looking PC games. You'll explore a large world with hidden technology and face enormous dinosaur like robots with incredible designs which are ridiculously dangerous. We can only hope that Horizon Zero Dawn 2 does come to PC. The HUD is in 21x9, but the cutscenes are in 16x9, some of which can be fixed with a hex edit, while others can't. This game for some reason seemed to be the only one that actually performed worse with my new graphics card compared to my old 2080 Super for some reason, but at high settings it sank usually in the 40 to 60 FPS range at most times. The Vibrant Biomutant is up next. Explore a vibrant and pretty impressive post-apocalyptic world as a small furry creature. Shoot, slice, ride creatures and even mechs around the world. The game relies on a narrator instead of voice acting though, so no characters really stand out. But on the upside, I don't think I've run into a single black bar or 16x9 issue as almost the entire game seems to be fully in 21x9. At max settings, it seemed to sit between 60 and 95 FPS. Next on the list is Sea of Thieves. The stylized pirate plundering game is an absolute ball with friends, allowing you to sail the seas, hunt for treasure, engage in ship battles with other players, and more. The water in this game, in my opinion, is one of the best looking in any game, despite being stylized. The game itself is in 21x9 of course, with a minimal HUD that is also in 21x9. The game is running at max settings, with a frame rate ranging all the way from 80 to 200 plus FPS. Ark Survival Evolved is a slightly divisive one, as people either hate it or have sunk literally thousands of hours into it and still hate it. But it's such a big game because of the draw of riding dinosaurs, wyverns, mammoths and all manner of different creatures. This game was recorded on a 2080 Super previously because it's a huge game and I didn't have room to reinstall it for a quick clip for this video. The HUD is in 21x9, while inventory is technically 16x9 but without black bars so it's basically 21x9. The game is quite taxing and you won't be able to run the game at max settings with a decent frame rate unless you have an absolutely killer rig. And I have also reviewed this game relatively recently. One of my favourite Star Wars games, Jedi Fallen Order, is an almost Souls-like Star Wars game with relatively challenging combat, parkour, force powers, puzzle solving and a relatively exciting story. And the game even includes lightsaber customization, which in my opinion, every single Star Wars game needs. The cutscenes are sadly in 16x9, but there are fixes out there. And at high settings, the game sat between 50 to 70 FPS but seemed to stutter quite a lot and have relatively regular frame drops, which was quite disorienting. And I've also reviewed this game previously. Early access procedurally generated survival game Valheim took the internet by storm at the beginning of 2021, with its interesting art style, unique take on exploring and learning for yourself rather than being told, and multiplayer options. It also allows you to build your own structures and even terraform the land. Grab a couple of mates and go adventuring and you don't know what you'll come across. The HUD and menus are all in 21x9 and at max settings the game seemed to vary between 45 to 80 FPS. Final Fantasy XV is an absolute vibe in which you cruise around the map with three of your buddies in your convertible car, completing quests and slaying monsters. 
The combat is exciting and the food looks amazing. The dialogue and cutscenes are in 21 by 9 but the menus seem to be mainly 16 by 9 At high settings, the game varied between 60 FPS all the way up to 110 at times. One of the best performing games on this list, Bioshock Infinite, takes you on a story in a racist and pretty messed up society in the sky with a unique and beautiful art style and a combination of guns and special powers which you use to take out enemies. Using a hook type grip attachment on your arm to swing around the city or sending an army of crows to devour someone is all pretty exhilarating. The cutscenes in HUD are both in 21 by 9 and at max settings I didn't see the game drop below 100 FPS at any point and was often in the high 200s. Abzu is an underwater adventure game where you will literally swim with the fishes through a short but beautiful and awe inspiring underwater world that is done in a unique and pretty awesome art style. The entire game seems to be in 21 by 9 as I didn't see a single black bar and at max settings the game stayed above 100 FPS at all times. Road 96 is the last game on this list and it's a very new game that caught my attention because of its awesome art style and the almost cozy vibe that comes along with it. It's a very replayable game and is similar to Firewatch in which most of the gameplay only really comes from talking and dialogue choices as well as a little bit of minor exploration. The game seemed to be in 21 by 9 at all times although there is no FOV slider, making the game sometimes feel a little too zoomed in and occasionally it felt cropped. At max settings, the game sat comfortably above 90 FPS most of the time. And that was 42 of the best ultra wide games of all times listed out for you guys. If you need more info on any of the games, feel free to leave a comment and I'll endeavor to answer any questions. And don't forget to leave a comment regarding your favorite games, whether they're on this list or not. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and peace out.